Hello and welcome everybody to another Credible Vest Report. My name is Craig Slate and of course I'm joined by my continual host and good friend Matt Mandel. On this week's episode folks we'll be updating you on the weather because we know you love weather. That's why we do it every week because we get all the reports back. More weather guys so we're going to keep doing that. In the weather there's another tropical storm heading our way. Just as old Hurricane Debbie she subsides we've got another one on her heels plus usda is highlighting what perishable trade may impact consumers as the four week trends we look at and how they're leaving a mark on your pocketbook oh and kroger albertson's merger you know we're going to talk some around that but uh, we're going to talk about the real impact uh, that union's potentially going to have not only on the u.s but on a, a global retail landscape and then we're going to touch into a little bit of uh, uh, forward thinking or innovative thinking uh, with a retailer out there that's doing some stuff that's on the forefront of what consumer and retail experience is. So, guys, welcome to the show and welcome, Matt. And my friend, how in the hell are you doing, considering the fact that uh, you've been under the knife recently? I, I am, all things considered, I am doing just fine. Finer than frogs here, as they say. Uh, recovering from surgery, had a lot of downtime over the last week. Uh, apparently, I'm not very good at doing nothing, but uh, that's what the doctor ordered. So I'm doing as little as possible for once. Yeah, that's uh, good. You know, that, that fro frog hair, finer than that. You know, I mean, you, you seem to be that you were that way last week. You go under the knife, you come back, you're still f finer than frog's hair. I, I guess I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to interpret from that that frog hair is very fine. Very, very fine. I mean, next next time you see a frog, pick it up. See just how I, fine that hair is. I, I have actually picked up a few frogs in my day. Uh, I just don't recall a lot of hair on there. So is is that kind of the point? That's, you're so damn, that's, that's you're so fine, damn fine. Oh, my God. So, man, that's that's pretty good. Well. Glad Being that, from uh, Texas, I'm surprised you haven't heard that one before. Oh no, I've I've absolutely heard it. I uh, just thought we would uh, dissect it, you know. And and I'm coming today, Matt. I'm just going to say I'm going to throw another one at you because I thought this morning, you know, getting ready for this, like, you know, I am full of piss and vinegar today. That's, and that's then a, that's as I good one. well, as I thought about that, I'm like, so how does that become? you're fired up, right? You know, how does that translate to I'm fired up when you're full? So I thought, you know what, I'm going to pose that question to you before we get into the weather. How in the world is piss and vinegar being full of that? How does that get you? How does that make you fired up? Think, Just curious. Think, think about it this way. You really got to pee. Are, are you at peace with the world? <laughs> that, that's all I got to say. Okay. You gotta all pee. Right, all right. And then yeah. I think vinegar is kind of self-explanatory, but yeah, I, I kind of get the. Yeah, I, I get that. All right, it's full of know. piss and we'll, vinegar. We'll, we'll well, I'm, the, uh, the I'm thinking that might burn. Is that the deal? Time. That's that's going to really fire you up. One, you got to pee really bad, and then when you do, it's going to be like you're peeing vinegar. And so then, okay, now it's starting to make all the sense in the world. And you know, for those who especially out there if you've been handling hot peppers, it'll it'll definitely burn. Yeah, that's there's some facts in that. So, all right, well, look. Uh, but, you know, bef before we get to the world is burning and because in parts of the country, it literally is. Let's uh, let's hit let's get on the hurricane watch, man. You know, we had uh, Debbie come through. She was uh, she she herself seemed to be full of uh, a lot of piss and vinegar, if you will, uh, and uh, dumped quite a bit of rain out there. So, well, let's say what what we talked a little bit about Debbie last week. Let's talk about our good new friend, Ernesto. What's happening on Ernesto? Ernesto? So Ernesto's coming through um, in the uh, the tropics right now, uh, building up some steam, although uh, it is taking a little longer to really solidify a, uh, a solid eye on the storm. So it's going to be slow moving, depending on which models you're looking at. This is likely not going to make landfall, uh, at least not in the southeast, uh, as was originally projected a week ago. Uh, it's looking to gain gain some steam, although a lot of the models are moving it westward. So most likely it will dump quite a bit of precipitation on the east coast. Um, while I was uh, researching my storms, I came across something kind of interesting, uh, something I had never 
thought of or heard of before, and that is uh, solar activity and how it affects storms. Uh, apparently, we are at a solar maximum right now, highest uh, solar spot activity in two decades. I know I'm nerding out. Bear with me. I promise. Get, get nerdy. Get nerdy here. But I'm gonna go apparently, get, I'm gonna go the, here's, take a break real quick. But you go nerd out. Run, run out for a pack of smokes. And, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think it's a time for a zen right now. There you go. Uh, apparently, the years where there is the highest major hurricane activity is the years where there is the lowest solar activity. So that does not bode well. However, all the other indicators are still pointing to a major hurricane season. Um, so obviously we have Ernesto coming through, likely to drop a lot of rain more in the Northeast and the Southeast. Um, there is, still, they are still predicting it will become a major hurricane, however, not making landfall, you know, that likely just leads to bad weather rather than, you know, damage from the storm itself. Um, uh, interesting fact, uh, the hurricane or storm activity in the Pacific is actually only running at about 30% of the normal year to date. So the likelihood that, you know, the storms will bring a lot of that precipitation up into the Gulf and relieve some of the water drought areas uh, we've seen in Western Mexico is probably low. Uh, the Atlantic activity is actually over 300% of normal. Um, however, after Ernesto passes, it looks like we'll probably have about two weeks of low activity. So hopefully Ernesto comes through, nothing major happens, and then we can all relax a little bit. But uh, I will put it on record right now, looking like uh, Labor Day weekend and into September, the activity will be ramping back up again. All right. It's on the record. Labor Day weekend. Gear up, kids. Don't plan any outdoor activities if you're out southeast. So there Don't you go. Come back and tell me how wrong I was in two weeks. Indeed. Indeed. Well, you know, I mentioned uh, the, the, the world is burning and, uh, you know, got, got some fires taking place over there um, in parts of, I believe, uh, if I, oh, in Oregon. I'm not Oregon, but... Uh, yeah, is it Oregon, Boise, yeah. uh, that area, Oregon, right? Idaho, up in the up in the northeast, and honestly, it's it, it's that time of year. Wildfires are I, there's quite a few in Arizona going as well. Um, you know, for the most part, it actually has been a, a, a little less than the last couple of years so far. Um, and you know, I think there's there's been a fair amount of precipitation, which helps to to keep the uh, the fires you know at bay. Uh, that said, you know, it is going to be drying up. So we'll see what the uh, the latter half of the summer and early fall brings. Um, good news is that you know, while there has been record heat on the West Coast, it looks like finally uh, temperatures are going to be coming back to normal. And for the next couple of weeks, we're looking at you know milder temperatures, uh, much closer to averages. That said, unfortunately for us in the uh, the, the Southwest and the the southern part of the U.S. Uh, New Mexico, Texas, they're still looking to be five to 10 degrees above normal for the, uh, Boo. Boo. I'm, I, Hey, don't, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just, uh, I'm just reporting the weather. Now I, I guess I, I won't shoot you today, but we need to, got to shoot somebody for crying out loud. I'll tell you what, enough of this damn heat. So, but you know, I, I, I got, Maybe it's just, you know, getting used to it after all this time, uh, you know, being back in Tucson. I, in fact, I played golf on Sunday morning. Now, it was a 7 a.m. tee off, so it was early. But, man, we got some overcast. Actually, it was sprinkling when I finished up. Uh, but, hell, I thought, this ain't bad. Yeah, the, the, the mornings this. actually have been, have been very nice lately. Uh, that said, you know, it does, does warm up pretty quickly still, but – you know, it's almost to the point that we can open the windows and doors in the morning. Almost. Yeah. Well, week. talking to my, talking to all my chums back in the great state of Tejas, uh, they don't get that reprieve. It sounds like from, uh, from sun up to sunrise. Yeah. Sun up. Nope. Sun nope. up to sundown and there into the evening hours. It is hot as blue blazing. And we, we used that one last week, guys, so we're not going to dissect blue blazing this week. Uh, listen back to last week's episode if you want to know more about blue blazing. Uh, anyway, but, yeah, good good update on that stuff. And, and I do know you didn't mention Colorado, but I was talking to somebody 
uh, earlier and, you know, uh, the fires that they had had there, it sounds like that's getting a little bit under control. They were, they were getting smoked in, uh, even in Denver, although there was no fire in Denver, they were definitely dealing with a lot of smoke, but it sounds like that is cleared and blue skies are, are back in the great city of Denver. And, uh, hopefully uh, the fires are under control and getting better all, all, all sure. over. Shout out to all those folks that are battling those blazes. We appreciate you. In indeed. All right. Well, let's let's take a look at what our friends at the USDA have this week. Uh, you know, a couple of deals in the USDA report. One was on the the color bell pepper deal out of the Canadian greenhouses. It looks like they're battling a uh, a disease. Now, you you probably are familiar with this. I am not, uh, and maybe some of our listeners are not, but. Fusarium is that how you pronounce mm -hmm. uh, the disease fusarium, that they're about? Yeah. yeah. So, do you know much about fusarium? Is that a new one for uh, you? I, I, I wish I didn't, but uh, it's it, it's it's fairly common. Um, you know, causes root rot. Plants end up. Uh, I, I a lot of the time it won't actually kill the plants, but they just don't produce at the same way because they can't take up the nutrition from the roots. Yeah, it sounds like it create a, a little bit of a, a slow start in the interim, but the big the bigger effect's gonna be on the end of the crop for those for those goes guys up there in the Canadian greenhouses and you know what usually goes into November. Uh it's gonna probably end in October, maybe early November, which uh for all of you uh, market watchers on the color bell space, uh be on the lookout for um a gap, if you will, because oh. uh Red, red peppers have, you know, been hot for pretty much the entire summer. And this is, this is definitely not going to ease up any of those uh, supply demand issues that we've been seeing. So I, I, I would not be surprised if that market continues to be on fire basically into December as, uh, you know, the, the Culiacan season really starts to finally get underway. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, Culiacan at best, early December. And that's, uh, at best, we are really looking at uh, probably a week or two into December really for, well, towards the end of December before anything really gets going. But, uh, yeah, that November time frame is going to be tricky. Uh, if the yeah, Canadians cu couple that with the, the water woes we've spoken of and people kind of sitting on the sidelines waiting to see what happens. Um, you know, while the, uh, the dams down there are slowly filling, uh, there's still a lot of, of worry. So, uh, it's going to, it's going to be an interesting, uh, interesting lead up to that winter deal. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. And, uh, part of that report too, it looked at some of the, the, or the big commodities, big volume movers and some of the prices there. And, you know, for, for the most part, uh, a lot of, a lot of high prices. I mean, avocados top in the list on big movers, uh, avocados trading, you know, upwards of 55 and higher, which is, that's a big number. I mean, they're always in the big number camp. Blueberries. So uh, interesting. I looked at blueberries. It's eleven dollars a flat. Eleven dollars doesn't sound like much, but it's that's a twelve six ounce case. That that's that's eleven bucks. And I did the math on that, you know. And if you equate that to a twenty two pound box of squash, that'd be a fifty four dollar squash box. So uh, yeah. So the blueberry guys on a on a weight basis, which a, a lot of this this business is done on weight. Uh, uh, that's not too too shabby a number. Cukes uh, getting better. Uh, the slicer category is getting better. Uh, although, what, what what do you got that at? Uh, is it we're in, we're pushing 14, 16s now on those supers? Yeah, I was going to say. Thank, thankfully, we're not uh, in the ten to twelve markets anymore. Uh, you know, upwards of yeah. I mean, you say fourteen, sixteen. I see that actually continuing to uh, to to go up. Um, quality seems to be decent right now but uh, if you have some good quality it's finally finally going to be worth some money well and, and the color bell space we talked about november is going to be tricky they're already on their high horse i mean it's uh, 17 bucks uh, on a market basis for an 11 pound carton um that's uh, that's pretty good money uh, they'll take that all day long for sure and uh, so it, again for all you uh retailers and grocery folks out there you better uh, be on the lookout on the bell pepper space because like, like green bells, we've talked about that endlessly uh, and where that's at. Uh, color bells are, are right there with it. 
And then not to spend too much time on our friends in the tomato category, but that continues to rock along. If you look across just the tomato category, it's it's in that high teens to $20 range for the most part, no matter what variety you're buying, it looks like. so. Recto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's speak in, I mentioned retailers and those guys out there. Let's touch real quick on what's, you know, the Albertsons. Not so much that, you know, the 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 merger itself we talked about last week, you know, some of the pressure they're getting from FTC. So, you know, this week, you know, there was a supermarket news report uh, taking a look at and really, you know, what is the impact of this, right? So the FTC is all amped up about, you know, monopolizing the U.S. grocery retail space and, you know, what's going on there. Uh, but, you know, when you start to dig into the numbers and, and reading through the supermarket news report, I mean, so first and foremost, on a on a global basis, uh, you know, Kroger and Albertsons, uh, they fall to, you know, as, as it looks grocery wise, they're what, number six and eight, I believe, uh, on yes. the list. You know, and six and eight on the list on a global deal. Uh, but, but you know, let's, let's face it, you know, they're primary retail, U.S. based. But when you look at the U.S. grocery sales, Matt, uh, the majority of that in the U.S. today is made up of, you know, the, the what the, I guess you call them the, uh, su- not supermarkets, national discount grocers. That, that's the, the, the moniker they give them, national discount. Mo- and so that's your Walmarts, Costco's, Aldi, Lidl, Amazon. You know, So these are, these are much more gro- global footprint organizations. But those are the folks that are making up the U.S. grocery sales today. In fact, Walmart being the big dog in that space. But, you know, so you've got Walmart leading at, at, at and on, on a global space at over $400 million in net grocery sales on a global scale. Um, R- roughly 30% of, of the total volume being sold. Um, yeah, and when, and when you look at the numbers, well, you know, Kroger's at six and Albertsons is at eight. If you were to combine the two, you know, they, they quickly jump to the number two position. Uh, as far as the the grocery retailers go, and that's in that's U- U.S. right? What you were you're, you're the numbers you're not talking global. You're talking U.S. right? Okay, correct. And, and so you know, obviously, that is what's really raising the eyebrows over at the FTC. But um, you know, if you look at the West Coast specifically, there, there's quite a bit of competition uh, in that grocery space. Uh, especially when you start to lump in the uh, the independent grocers that. You know, while they don't have the same scale as some of these other retailers do when it comes to merchandising and pricing, you know, a lot of these guys are running circles around the, the big guys as well. So uh, while, yes, I understand why they're they're kind of making a stink about it, you know, it's not like they're going to just jump in. These two are going to merge and all of a sudden they're going to dominate the, uh, the, the West Coast uh, retail space. Well, they're not going to not dominate dominate even on a national basis. So, you know, here, here's an interesting factoid. You know, so Kroger and Albertsons on a U.S. basis, right? You know, we said they were six and eight on a global, but they're number two and number four when it comes to U.S. Combined, there'll be about one hundred and seventy billion dollars in in gross sales, which is a big number. That's half of Walmart. Less, U.S. Less groceries, half. Yeah, less. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, even with that combined of that and, and that 170s probably, I mean, that accounts for a little bit of the, the stores that they're going to divest of. But at the end of the day, they're probably going to be closer to 165, maybe 170. But either way, they're still not going to be combined the biggest grocery retailer. So, you know, as I mentioned last week, I, I'm not a big fan of regulation. I'm not really a big fan of much of whatever the government does. And, you know, them stepping in with this, you know, save the world mentality. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's it, it's potentially it, good good overall for the U.S. consumer. I don't think you're, you're going to look at them monopolizing the business. But that's just what I think. I, I'm sure that uh, – the FTC could give a damn about what Craig thinks, but you know what? It's my mine and your show. I can say what the hell I want to. Well, so, so. we'll see how many people from the FTC are tuning in to the Credible Vegetable Report. If you're yeah, out there, it, please it, hit that like so, button. But, yeah, you know what? Please do, or give us a, give us a jingle. 
hit us up on the, you know, the old telephono. Do they still, if they still do that, yeah, I guess you could do the email thing too. So either way, we'll take any communication at all. Uh, hey, but one other thing in this report, I just want to touch on, don't spend a lot of time, but so another interesting factoid, uh, you, you know, is the amount of union jobs at, at the grocery space, 50% to 14% across the top 15 grocers in the past 20 years. So 50% of union, I mean, of grocery jobs were unionized. That's a, man, that's a mega switch. Correct. And I mean, you, you've, you've seen the trend pretty much across all industries over the last 20, 25 years, you know, union membership uh, and union makeup has, has been on the decline. You know, obviously uh, the current administration, that's kind of one of their pushes is to, you know, reinvigorate the, uh, the union movement. Um, but uh, I, I would not have guessed that it, it had fallen from 50 to 14%. That's, yeah. that's a pretty drastic decline. Yeah. I mean, then that's calculated against the, the top 15 grocers, but yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I was so shocked by that, but uh, and well, and before we get off this topic, retail Walmart reports earnings tomorrow. Um, it's not, you know, it's a big, it's a big day uh for, for the Wall Street, for, for really consumer sentiment. Uh, everybody's watching for those numbers. They had a, a huge report last uh, quarter. Uh, everybody's anticipating what they're going to have. Just kind of see directionally our consumers, you know, this continued, you know, what, how they'll read into the numbers, who knows, right? But it's either going to be a read if Walmart has really good store sales uh, and, and, earnings and that kind of thing, then it's going to indicate that there are people more and more moving towards the Walmart shopper and possibly uh, in a lot of cases trading down. However, if the numbers are not what they expect and they don't see the sales number, then there's going to be the concern that people have just stopped shopping, you know, and now the consumer's starting to pull in. So I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what when Walmart reports tomorrow is going to indicate anything good. You know, I mean, certainly it's probably going to be you know, likely be good news for them. All expectations for them to have another bang out quarter, particularly with their growth on online. But, uh, you know, from Wall Street and from Main Street's perspective, um, I think the indicator from whatever they report is probably going to be viewed as, as negative on an economic basis. I don't know. Any thoughts on that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think there's a lot of economic indicators that have come out, you know, over the last month or so that are showing that, uh, spending in general in the U.S. is finally starting to slow down. Uh, you know, the inflation report came out and it's finally, you know, back under 3%. Um, there's rumblings that the Fed will finally make a, a rate cut in September, whether or not that's the right move or not, who knows. Um, but we all know that, you know, when things start to get tough and, and pocketbooks uh, tend to get strained, People do tend to uh, flock to the the lower cost uh, retailers out there. Walmart being, you know, one of the, the the biggest name brands when it comes to to lower cost shopping. So, uh, I would expect they have another good report. Um, but you know, how how goes Walmart is not necessarily how goes the entire U.S. Well, and you referenced today's CPI report that came out, and the and the fact that yeah, we're back under the the three percent range, which is good. Fed's going to look at that in a, in a favorable light, as well as everybody else. And also in that, you know, for those of us in the food space, you know, part of the good news was in the in the food end of it. And if you look at it over year over year basis, right now it's it's about two point two percent. You know, month over month, it was point two percent, which if you annualize that, that's 2.4. But either way, all of those are much closer to two than three, which is, is good for the food space, transportation, and shelter. Didn't have quite as a uh, positive number, and that's kind of what's kind of held things up. But, yeah, we'll, we'll see how, how the world continues to go. But it definitely looks like prices uh, are starting to come in, but it also does look like the consumer is also starting to stay in with their money. So <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll – We'll see. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, we, we will. See. Right? Indeed. Indeed. Well, hey, uh, man, we got so much to cover. Let's let's real quick touch on. We mentioned, uh, you know, a retailer getting into some innovation and, and just real quick I, article this week. I saw on Aldi um, and, and Instacart upgrading their partnership. 
uh, and you know how they're trying to connect uh, store technologies across the Aldi locations in the states, in, in different states. Um, In-store mode, carrot tags. Not exactly sure what exactly what was. Uh, as well as, you know, just a fulfillment technology. So they're trying to, to take that and, and really lean into the e-commerce uh, order space. But the thing I found most intriguing in this article, right, you know, and, and different stuff they're doing, is it's a good article to, to catch. Um, they're util- Aldi's got this this new grocery cart, right? So, uh, and, and Matt, they talked about this grocery cart. I'm telling you, back days when it may be even before your entry into the food business, you know, so EDI has been around a long time. Uh, what electronic data interchange is that, is that what that stands for? So that, basically, yeah. yeah. So EDI tagging, right. And so the idea was each product had an EDI tag on it and, and you literally could have a grocery cart that would scan the product as it went in. Right. That, and, and this literally that idea goes back many, many years. Well, it looks like Aldi's finally got something. Uh, they call it caper carts uh, down in Australia, uh, which it's an AI-powered smart cart designed to make it an easier consumer experience. Oh, pretty pretty damn cool invention. I like it. What about you? It's, uh, you know, it's interesting. Um, a few different retailers have, have tried, you know, different versions of this, um, you know, where you can, you know, pick stuff out on your phone and add it to a cart and then, you know, in store, it'll guide you to where stuff are, you know, ultimately when it comes down to, to AI, AI is only going to be as smart as the information is fed. Right. And it, it's all going to depend on, on how the algorithm weights you know, di- different uh, aspects of the shopping experience. Um, you know, maybe it'll just force you to continue buying new goods. However, if, the retailers get creative and say, you know, decide to to start offering deals on certain items and that filters into the algorithm. And, you know, maybe they guide you through parts of the store that you don't normally shop in. So, you know, there, there, I think there's a lot of opportunity here um, for the retailers to, to get creative. Uh, but, you know, as they say, the devil's in the details and we'll see how it, uh, how it finally plays out. But uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's exciting to see that there are, are going to be ways that, you know, you may be able to, to shake up the shopping experience. Yeah. I, like I say, I love it for me. You know what? My number one ask is don't make me go through checkout. That's it. I there's, mean, just let me go in, do my shopping and head to my car. Yeah. Well, the, uh, there's a lot of people that are, you know, really frustrated with the, the self checkout experience. It hasn't quite lived oh. up to the hype. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Amazon actually, you know, canceled their their grab and go, you know, walk out of the store program, which, you know, I think a lot of people looked at that and were were really excited about that, and it just it didn't seem to pan out the way that they. I, I, and I'm super perplexed by that, honestly. Actually, now I never actually shopped the one, so I don't know maybe what some of the downsides were, but I'm like, that that fits the Craig Slate model. I mean, at least in my mind, right? I mean, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, but but this, you talk about the self checkout. Last night I probably had eight items. Right, I'm a I'm a perfect candidate for self checkout. And I looked at the self checkout. There was something open, and I'm like, neep. I'm just gonna go right here to the line. I'm gonna wait a few extra minutes because inevitably, when when I go to, it doesn't make a difference. I get a freak in. You did something effing wrong every time I'm at self checkout, and then I gotta wait. You know, whatever. So if you if you'd stop throwing the uh, the methamphetamines <laughs> and cocaine in your shopping cart, they wouldn't need somebody to come over and verify your age at checkout. Well, they, they they do not have a disclaimer for that. They should put a sign up for that, you know, and let you know that that's not allowed. So and, and, and honestly, in some states, you you can't use self checkout if you're buying alcohol. As an example, they you know they make California. You go, it, yeah, I, I was going to say California, but I wasn't entirely sure if that was the case. But you know, I things, things like that should, <laughs> I, I don't doubt, uh, <laughs> yeah, simple things like that should, you know, be able to, to free up uh, some of those checkers. But, yeah, you know, it just, it's really more of a negative, I think, than anything else. Whereas you, I think they were hoping, you know, maybe cut down on, uh, on their labor costs when, when it comes to checkers. But the, the experience, honestly, is, is kind of off-putting. Well, 
I'm all for freeing up. I'm all for free markets. Free, free, set me free. To borrow a quote from a from a One little of my deep. favorite four letter words. <laughs> but speaking of that, free markets and setting them free. Let's let's get into some zucchini. So zucchini market finally. Life is in the house for the zook. Oh man, it's I mean. Yes, it's it's showing signs of life, and it, it finally looks like supply and demand are, are starting to to settle in at a good level. But um, you know, I, frankly, the market is still depressed. It's it's finally you know showing signs of life. I think we mentioned last week that uh, it looked like it was gaining some steam. Uh, movement is finally there, uh, but you know, pricing on the Zook front still. Um, while most of the sales are in double double digits, there's still people delivering uh, zucchini into the LA market, you know, for an $8 bill. So, um, man, I, I, I see hope. I, I hope the, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel is not a train coming <laughs> straight at me, but it, it's looking like it's finally getting in shape. You know, yellow had, continues to, to stay in that same 10 to 12 range. Um, and gray continues to to outstrip both of them as, as far as market pricing goes. A little softer than, than last week, but still in that comfortably in that fourteen to sixteen dollar range. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I haven't seen Hope in a long time, so the next time you run into her, just say hi for me. I, I'd like to prefer to know that. It, it, you'll, you'll probably see her before I do. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, on the squash beast, good news. You know, and just a commentary. You know, we talked about hurricanes and did some look back October, you know, and we're not that far out. We're already looking forward to that. And that's when we start to kick back in at the sunset gang. Uh, you know, it's a terrible month. Usually last year is the worst one that I, I could find on record really. Um, but I'm looking at the way the hurricane thing's setting up. You talked about Labor Day that coming back, but 2018 was the last time uh, I could find we had double digits in October and look back even further, I recalled a hurricane that took place and actually we did some research and sure enough, there was a hurricane that came through in the Southeast and the name's going to skip me. But anyway, it was the first week of October. Uh, I remember it from the tomato piece that got knocked out uh, during that time frame. It really had a huge impact. Went across Tampa, I believe into uh, Orlando. So uh Hopefully not the case this year for sure, um, but it's something that we've got to be wary of that that could change things quite a bit. If that Labor Day forecast that you're talking about uh, holds any anything to it, um, then you know it's going to start to affect those crops uh, in the southeast because they will definitely be in in the ground and with stuff out there. So. Again, hopefully it is not the not the case. I do hope for good squash markets, but I hope for good squash markets across the board for everybody. I would prefer much higher demand versus uh, a disaster. Can, can, we, can we just get, you know, good pricing without anybody having to get hurt in the process? That's, the, is that too much to ask? I mean, really? Yeah, really? Please, yeah. please. So, uh, OG Cukes, buddy, what you seeing? I see they're bucking. Uh, what, so, what, what, what are they bucking? No, they're 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 bucking their their previous trend. You know, they had been kind of sluggish for for a few weeks. Uh, that market's finally, you know, normally heading into September, the the market really catches fire. But it, it's looking a few weeks earlier this year. Uh, finally, you know, pushing upwards in that sixteen eighteen dollar range. Some people quoting into the twenties. So, um, you know, it's it, it's a little early, but finally showing some some signs of life. And hopefully, those OG cute growers will make a little bit of money yeah for sure for sure and you know i'm not gonna even you're not gonna spend much time on green bells we talked about bell peppers those suckers are still high those folks better be making some money whoever has them you know they they should be ringing the ringing the dead gum register and uh ready for that to, to get back to some normalcy and I keep saying each week I'm optimistic. It's better now. It's 22 to 24. It's, at least it's not in the 30s, for God's sakes. But uh, yeah. um, ideally, that thing's going to get more adjusted and back to the high teens uh, where people make money and we can sell stuff. I was in freaking safe with that. So, you know, and I'm, I said I wasn't going to talk Green Bells long, but I got to tell a story. Yeah, give so give me in, your Craig Slate story. You know, and I, I, you know, I'm in a retailer, which I think I've already said the retailer. So just it's a random <laughs> retailer. Bag. Put the yeah, genie back know. in the bottle. 
But literally they had six green bell peppers on the shelf. Green bell peppers. We're talking a staple. They had six. And they were buried. I had to find them because I'm looking for a green bell pepper. So I'm on a mission. And I'm like, seriously, I've never thought I would be in a store without green. But that's how tight the market is, right? I mean, and, and I'm and and not it, all retail that I've been in, because I've been in two or three this week, um, they've all been very much narrowed down displays to virtually no product. And then really some of the product they had is not too 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 swell. So, you know, it, it's a market that has, I'm telling you, the high prices, they're, they're great if you've got them, but it's terrible for consumption. It, it's, 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 people will switch to something else. And, you know, so we got to get some more green bell peppers in this dead gun market. That's just, that's my, yeah. my pitch for yeah. that because. Green, and green bell peppers used to be, you know, the, the economic alternative to, to colored peppers, but when both of them are, are on fire, it, it's just going to lead to lower consumption. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. So, uh, aromas, we talked about those guys already last, but not least the old egg planto, which has had a really good summer, really good summer. Yeah. It actually looks like the market may be pushing a little higher as well. So 24, $26. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I will say, uh, Normally during the summer months, the the quality of eggs I see on the shelf are subpar. But for the most part, this entire summer, all the eggplant I've seen at retail has been has been pretty damn good. So, and uh, you know, I got I got I got to concur with you on that. That's been kind of the amazing thing. You know, we talked I think last week. Nine times out of ten, high prices mean low quality, and that has not been the case on the eggplant. It's Definitely been a been a strong market through the summer, but overall quality, at least what we've seen out this way, has been, yeah, it's been definitely uh, above average. So, Show. for sure, for sure. Well, my friend, uh, glad that you were able to rally yourself off the IV and the codeine and uh, show up for the show. I, I, ne I never said I'm not on opiates. I never said that. <laughs> Well, yeah. Okay. Well, I was going to, what is the word docs is, is docs. Is that just when you tell somebody where they're at? Right. Yeah. And when yeah you I think, I think when that's you dock somebody sensitive information on. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really, personally so it's, 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 information. it's yeah, personally. Yeah. So I wasn't going to dox you on that. Right. Uh, but you doxed yourself. So that, that's, doable, I did not. So. I just said, I never said I wasn't, I did not say <laughs> I am or am not. I can neither confirm nor deny those allegations. Hey, fair, fair enough. Uh, your secrets are safe with all of us here listening to the credible best report. So, uh, no, glad to have you back, man. Glad surgery went well. Um, and, uh, yeah, good, good fun catching up. Uh, but that's it. We are, we're, we're done. Uh, any parting words, Mr. Mandel, before we, we check out? Um, I, I got nothing. May the force <laughs> yeah, be with apparently. you. Yeah, <laughs> apparently. There you go. You and Han Solo back there. Yeah, force be with you for sure. Yeah, guys, force be with everybody. Thank you so much for listening uh, to another Credible Vest Report. You know, we always ask somebody, you know, like us, repost us. Do all those internet things that you're supposed to do in that social hell, media hell, space. Troll hey. us. Tell, tell us what, tell us what we got wrong. Tell us what we're doing. I, wrong. I would love some trolling. That would be awesome. So anybody wants to do some trolling, do it with Matt. Cause I, I probably won't be checking mine uh, soon enough to really be effective, but uh, I do, do like to get trolled. I just may not respond. Your, so. your, your jitterbug <laughs> phone with the big numbers, you can't really uh, <laughs> Hell yeah. re yeah, respond my, to social media flip, posts very well. My flip phone really is terrible at downloading anything, so I just skip it. So, uh, All right, guys. Uh, appreciate it. Everybody have a great uh, week, and we will be back next week, guys, and we are out. Thanks very much.